Όχι, άλλο να δεις εδώ. Όλοι κάθονται το τραπέζι με τις φυλάκες. Τώρα θα ξεκινήσει φαντάζομαι γιατί. Yes. Good afternoon, dear guests and participants of today's event. My name is Shukrora Sakirov, and I'm an eco activist. And we are happy to and we are pleased to, to welcome you at the event. On behalf of our country, we would like to thank all the guests and the participants who are taking part at our forum in person and also those who are in online format connected to us. I would like to give the floor to my co-moderator, the head of the uh, UNICEF in Uzbekistan, Mr. Yunizadeh. Thank you very much, Nuxora, dear participants of the International Forum. This forum is symbolic because it is on the eve of the World Day of Child. As we all know, the climatic crisis is a crisis of the rights of uh, children. And also the children uh, who are less uh, um, part of that uh, ch change of climate and they feel it most. And today's event uh, puts the basis for further cooperation of the countries of our region and uh, for preparation of the COP28 conference, during which We'll be discussing and adopting agreements and measures on fighting climate change at the international level. Dear participants, to open the forum, we would like to give the floor to the chairperson of the Trustee Council of the International uh, Public Fund, Zamin, Her Excellency Zerouad Mezioevna. Assalamu alaikum, dear participants of today's forum, dear youth, dear friends. I am very delighted to see you at today's event. This, uh, this event uh, has become sort of, is becoming a platform for the exchange of ideas, thoughts, and solutions. And this for subject for uh, subject matter of this form is very serious to involve youth and children into the climate change agenda. This I also would like to thank our dear guests, Madam Emine Hanum, Jamila Hanum, and Aigul Hanum, and I thank them for their participation to this event. Also I would like to express my sincere appreciation for the representatives of the Central Asian governments, uh, guests from international and local organizations, diplomatic corps, as well as representatives of civil society. The participants of today's forum. Today, the exchange, the climate change is becoming ever more acute. Central Asia is probably the, the worst suffering region for the consequences of the climate change. The average temperature, uh, air temperature, is increasing at a twice speed of the global average, and as a result of that, one third of the glaciers has disappeared. If this tendency continues, in coming 20 years, the water flows in the rivers of Amudaria in Serdaria is set to decrease by 15%. And that in turn will seriously affect the, the economic and social development uh, of the Central Asian people. Children, in spite of the fact, are not the reasons for the climate change, but still they are the ones that suffer the worst. In spite of the fact, they still bring out their own ideas on, uh, on, on on mitigating the situation, and that lends us a great hope. 
because they have the right for the clean environment, clean water, and fresh air. So, in addressing the young people, young generations of Uzbekistan, I would like to say that your enthusiasm, your power, your enthusiasm, and new approach will help to make this water a better place. Your voice and the fact that it will be taken into account uh, is, is, of course, crucial. You are the main participants of this forum. We are all we have all gathered here to help you to live in a clear and sustainable environment. So as a as a the so the the strategy which has been developed as the uh, result of the Samarkand Eco Forum for the years 24, 20, uh, 20, 30 is uh, uh, has helped and laid the foundations for the development in the environmental sphere. Dear guests, to treat the environment in a reasonable and sensible way is not a matter of choice anymore, it's an obligation. And that uh, puts us in, in, in a condition when we have to be responsible for the future of the generation, for the generations to come, we have to be role models for preserving the environment for the young generations. We have to, it's, it's admittable that countries cannot fight the environmental change alone. The only solution is to unite and become stronger in that way. Our children and youth, uh, we have to encourage the relations and discussions between the young people of our countries that, and that, that will lead and pave the way for the uh, future cooperation. We would like the uh, we would like to have a constructive dialogue and constructive cooperation, and we would like to uh, to to pay to bring attention uh, to the climate change uh, to our in our region, identify common goals and strengthen our common objectives. I'm sure that the young generation has uh, uh, active participation. We will be we will be able to make one step towards the green future in joint efforts. And thank you very much for your attention. Zirat Mahmudana, thank you very much for your speech and also for your engagement in promoting participation of children and youth in solving the climatic issues. Now I would like to give the floor to Her Excellency Emine Erdogan the First Lady of Turkey. Kuruluşların <gülüyor> Yavrularımızın çocukluklarını doyasıya yaşayabilecekleri temiz, özgür ve güvenli bir dünya için atılan her adına can gönülden destekliyorum. Çevre krizlerinin kıtaları, okyanusları aşan boyutlarından ötürü farklı coğrafyalarda toplanarak çözüm aramayı çok anlamlı buluyorum. Bu vesileyle Türk dünyasının kadim şehirlerinden Taşkent'te olmaktan ziyadesiyle memnunum. Baş... Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to, to, to convey the best uh, greetings from the Turkish people. Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are 8 million people and they all suffering, 8 billion people uh, suffering from the climate change and the worst sufferers are the children. UNICEF, uh, according to the UNICEF, uh, uh, the children are the ones that are suffering the worst. Thus, uh, the, the subject of the climate change and the children's rights are on the top of our agenda. Unfortunately, 
uh, in uh, in all across the world, in Central Asia, in Africa, in uh, around the Mediterranean Sea, we feel and see the climate change, droughts, and the water, uh, the, the the water scarcity, soil degradation, and these are the really uh, the, if affecting the worst the populations of the world. If we want to can if we want to preserve the water and and if we want to preserve water and uh, and soil, we have to take a united uh, uh, actions and to to reverse the trend. Thirty million children are starving from the uh, hunger and starvation across the world. But still. But we see that the problem of the hunger can be solved and starvation can be solved successfully. Our common home, this planet, we uh, we have to get rid of many uh, evils and uh, problems that really prevent us from achieving a successful future. At present, the Republic of Turkey is paying is, is paying a special attention to the preserving the natural environment. We have taken a number of projects within the last six years, and these projects are, are being implemented quite successfully. We all know that our projects in the environment is probably the most important projects that we can uh, we can uh, perform. These projects, uh, require to, in order to be to, to be implemented successfully, require a team effort and setting the right standards and the right objectives. In all our schools, we have introduced a new subject called the environment and climate change. And at these lessons, we teach our children to treat the environment in a respectful and meaningful way. So the relations between a human and uh, environment has to be done on a has been taken should be taken to an absolutely new level. And since uh, say, and having said that, uh, we have to uh, treat our children in a way uh, so that they grow and become responsible citizens and treat the world and take care of the environment in the best possible way. Due to the initiatives of the proposed by Turkey at the United Nations Organization, we are at present pressing a new agenda of zero emissions, uh, uh, high quality, uh, high quality standards for the environmental uh, approaches, as well as we believe that the we have to preserve the, those war because we believe we have to preserve it for the future generations. Dear friends, so today's meeting is basically uh, is, is here to prove that all countries of the world understands and realizes the importance of uh, treating the, the nature in a, in a respectful way. Apart, uh, unfortunately, because Apart from the uh, problems of the global conflicts, terrorism, uh, there are many that we also have to face the problem of the ch climate change. On the 7th of October, Israel, in the violation of the international law, has attacked the uh, its neighbor. And that has led uh, to a terrible uh, human losses. And the worst struggling are the children. The children are now suffering from the world bombs and uh, sheltering. In spite of the fact few people are offering help to Gaza, we still have to think about the children. 
and children of this Gaza sector, their religion, their language uh, is suffering the worst. This bloodshed that is happening there is, in spite of the, that uh, cultural and religious affairs, and as well in spite of the, uh, uh, is, is taking the worst. The problem is not only about uh, the G Gaza, but it's also in Myanmar, Somalia, Ukraine, and Sur Syria. Globally, Turkey is, is taking pains and taking steps to help those children that I especially need because, because we believe that children are the future of this world and and we believe that they have to be taken care of. Their names should not just disappear. Their families the Jewish, pe the Jewish people that have consciousness, that have to th think about the blood that they have shed in, in, in Palestine and and we have to live as decent men and women. So uh, to, to having said that, we believe we have to, uh, we are, have, who have gathered at this during, at, at this forum. And I would like to thank the government of Uzbekistan for organizing this forum and workshop today. And also I would like to thank the UNICEF office as well as Zamin uh, found public foundation. We give the floor to Her Excellency Jamile Elamalhoda. تشکر میکنم از سرکار خانم زراعت میزایوا برای اینکه این جلسه رو تشکیل دادن و همینطور تشکر میکنم از مسئولین یونیسف خیلی خوشحال هستم از اینکه در این جلسه شرکت میکنم اینجا حضور من هم به دلیل رشته خود من هست که تخصص من علوم تربیتی و به موضوع کودکان خیلی علاقه دارم و سال هاست که برنامه های یونیسف رو دنبال می کنم هم به خاطر اینکه also I'd like to thank the government of Uzbekistan and uh, their uh, Uzbek people for the hospitality the participants uh, big ecological problems are basically the result of the non-equal and uh, non-trivial actions of the people in every level in different spheres. Children and adults from one side are the victims of these serious problems. Besides, children can facilitate to increase the take part in the processes in the restoration of different uh, problems that impact to the environment. Besides, as a future uh, decision takers, uh, children and adults can play an important role in uh, turning back the process of climate change and adaptation to the consequences of the climate change.
And obviously, this subject is uh, very important. And uh, our, uh, in our government strategy, we reflect these aspects that help to solve the issues on uh, climate change. I'd like to say that, first of all, with regard to the climate change, the problems uh, that we have in this regard, we discuss uh, always, and uh, today we involve youth uh, to this process and the uh, impact of this process to children and uh, youth are, uh, is uh, rather significant. Therefore, I would like to inform you on my opinion on how we can uh, make sure that this negative uh, impact uh, will be mitigated. With regard to the questions uh, which I'd like to raise in this forum today, it's important for us to know your opinion and I'd like to thank you uh, also beforehand uh, for your comments, which you will express later. Of course, we're living in the world where which in uh, this uh, moment we have to think about our children. From the very outset, our children should get due uh, necessary conditions for their living in this world. And from this point of view, our future generation must get uh, good conditions that should be created for them. And it's a uh, our basic objective as well, to ensure safe and reliable uh, environment for them. Again, uh, I'd like to inform you that uh, both uh, public uh, organizations and NGO and civil society institutions to jointly conduct necessary measures. Besides, uh, one question arises. We know that this, uh, we have such problems, problems of climate change. And from this point of view, we see that it impacts to the both youth and children. From the other side, we cannot introduce necessary efficient measures, probably because we fully do not uh, realize the whole uh, volume of this difficulty or realizing that we cannot introduce practical measures or maybe one of the reasons also could be in the world there are different states cannot realize some concrete efficient measures probably there is no uh, tools for uh, necessary cooperation for us I think that uh, we need to find uh, exact answers. And uh, of course, children and youth and uh, education for them uh, with regard to environment protection, climatic issues are very important. When uh, one, one of the questions uh, and answer to this question is system of education for children and youth. Therefore, we need to uh, especially uh, st focus on uh, education issues. And uh, I'd like to say that answers which we're going to expect to get during these discussions will lead to some constructive decisions. Areas, uh, topics of this uh, uh, subject was uh, projects, some strategies were developed and uh, they need to be updated and introduce necessary changes of, uh, in the content of such documents. I think in different countries, scientists, uh, philosophers, peers, teachers, different organizations should. I'm confident uh, they're already taking measures and working in this field, but uh, we need uh, some uh, coordination among them. We need to strengthen and activize this role 
in the role of their activity. From this point of view, there are, there are some obstacles. Allow me uh, to highlight on them. There are some uh, problems and uh, there are some proposals and uh, uh, they are raised, provided uh, that uh, regarding thematic uh, issues, some climatic uh, threats and how to solve them. Uh, it's all important. If uh, somebody knew that, they would solve these issues. Not uh, It's uh, not enough only to know about them, but uh, we should know also the ways how to solve these uh, questions. Youth, children live in our planet. They must uh, respect this land, nature, environment as their parents. Therefore, uh, they need to, to educate them in such a spirit that uh, they value it very highly. And at this uh, current moment, our children are accepting that through uh, some feelings and uh, perceptions uh, in comparison with the adults. Their perceptions differ and uh, adults uh, are oriented to some experience that they had before in their life. But children are uh, oriented uh, to the uh, point of view of their perceptions at the moment. Therefore, in the uh, environment issues, we need uh, to raise awareness of our children. Similarly, uh, uh, in, be involved in these processes that we undertake uh, in solution of different ecological issues. First of all, it all starts at the level of family. It should be formed from the moment of the appearance of the child in the family. Worldview is also formed at the family level. For different religions, uh, there is a subject that unites. It's a motherland. It's a uh, what uh, God has created and presented to the humankind, the most valuable in the providing, uh, representing such a motherland to the people. Uh, you want people to protect this motherland so that this nature uh, flower in our uh, surrounding world. And uh, this subject is discussed in different uh, languages. For example, in the world, uh, there was a point of view that uh, the God is uh, the one for all. And of course, from this point of view, if we uh, call our children uh, so that they refer to the, these issues of ecology, say, on something very important uh, in their life, of course, I can say more, but allow me to say briefly in completion, my conclusion in Quran Karim, Holy Quran, in Surah Nuh, it said that uh, Prophet Muhammad said, My soul, and if I don't listen to my soul, and if not interesting to listen to my soul, then uh, he asks God Almighty, and Almighty uh, answers him, responds him. I created a humankind in this world and I made uh, made sure that they live in this uh, universe, in this world. Similarly, in this surah uh, says, this surah says that uh, Allah said, I asked the humankind so that uh, it, they uh, take care of the universe and that they improve it and uh, make it greener. And uh, after 
I uh, allowed to humankind to live on Earth, uh, they will uh, be living in the nature, uh, in this land. This is uh, their uh, place of habitat. Habitat. Therefore, I think this activity is, uh, and the subject of this uh, meeting is very crucial. And uh, this will allow, first of all, to raise awareness of people. Similarly, uh, we'll uh, focus on their future so that the children and the families, people themselves form their understanding on how we should uh, uh, take care of environment. And finally, as a result, when uh, we say on and uh, pray God, we should always know uh, how to answer. We should pray uh, so that God uh, will uh, keep us and keep uh, our environment, uh, protect us. Uh, I would like to say that uh, we always want the life continue on earth so that it be eternal and the environment in this regard is the most important component. And uh, we trust that our actions, efforts in this uh, regard will help confidently to achieve uh, positive, efficient changes. And the main principles identified in this uh, uh, sphere, we should not for forget. You are all witnessing that You know, uh, that both UNICEF and other organizations uh, that will be speaking today will note the basic areas of strategy of solution of these uh, problems, ecological problems. And uh, that it, first of all, is a threat uh, for the people, worsening of environment. And uh, one more uh, issue, uh, we live in a world where there are some threats for some people, for children, and uh, the one there is a region. There are problems with hunger related, uh, uh, children uh, remain without uh, their uh, shelter. People suffer from some problems and conflicts. And this is a Gaza region, sector Gaza. In this sector Gaza for children, for youth, situation is very difficult. We see that there are some pressure and conditions uh, have worsened for them. We all can see them uh, witnessing the situation in Gaza. And uh, here, what uh, can we say? We see uh, in mass media what uh, situation was happening. People continue living there and pray God uh, so that the things change for the better for them and they uh, approach the cameras or, uh, and the mass media and uh, saying about their opinion, expressing their will. All scientists, uh, research, uh, academic, uh, uh, and the world community, Also, all other uh, stakeholders uh, should sit together, discuss these issues. And we know that the crying of children is a very sad thing. We should uh, pay attention to this. We know that uh, different uh, meetings, forums, which are held 
to help to change the situation for children, to make the world better for them, for their uh, residing in the future. And uh, to help children to understand some subjects that are crucial uh, for their future as well. First of all, they should uh, sense and uh, feel that and uh, will with their heart. We also said about the environmental issues. A year ago in Iran, we also uh, sent a message to other children of the planet as children of other countries of the world should uh, hear this appeal. The basic uh, part of the population and of the countries of the world say that they speak in the same language. Uh, what is important in uh, uniting all of us is uh, all the human affection and respect to the nature, to the country, <clears throat> to the environment. And here, we said that children all over the world and have uh, opportunity to talk to each other. Once again, I'd like to return to Gaza issue. The uh, children are killed, the children are hungry, And uh, this uh, this is concern for the people in the other parts of the world. They see that, they recognize that. Uh, in part, uh, particularly, I would like to refer to UNICEF, to U UN organizations. If uh, you could uh, more responsibly and uh, work harder to protect such children. And also with regard on the fact uh, that uh, to those who are supporting this violence uh, against uh, Gaza, if you could impact on them to stop them, and if you could uh, prevent the violation of the rights, that would be uh, very important. And uh, would be very useful. And thanks uh, for I will be praying for the peace. Thank you for your attention. Dear forum participants, uh, dear Zarat Mahmoudouna uh, and the uh, heads of the forum of Zabin, dear friends, first of all, I'd like to express my uh, gratitude to the government of Uzbekistan, to International Public Fund Zamin and uh, UNICEF for the organization of the forum and uh, warmly welcome its participants. I'd like to express my thanks to respected uh, Zirat Mahmoudouna for the invitation to visit the capital of Uzbekistan, hospitable Tashkent, which is one of the oldest uh, ancient uh, cities located in the Great Silk Road. Dear participants, we attach uh, great importance to involve children and youth to the solution of the problems of the climate change. The given work is conducted in a systematic manner and is reflected in our national strategic documents of development. According to the concept of the youth policy for 2020-2030, priority attention is uh, attached to the following issues. That's a provision of the youth opportunities to develop of human potential, 
to form the youth as a basic resource of development of the state and the community. The support of youth uh, initiatives in political, economic, and social spheres, and formation of the responsible attitude of the youth to their health, heritage of ancestors, and interaction with the environment. We can see that the children and youth are not only vulnerable to the climate change, but uh, are significant uh, actors in achieving national climatic objectives. More than half of the territory of our country is uh, located in the altitudes from 1,000 to 3,000 meters, and the difficulties that the residents come across in highlands, we know well. Evidently, mountain countries are subject to serious risk to uh, climate change, growth of the deficit of water resources, land degradation, and natural cataclysms. We welcome support uh, by international community of our efforts to mitigate the uh, consequences of the climate change and, and adaptation to them in the uh, mountain in those areas. We will continue our activity and remain initiators of the protecting and supporting uh, mountainous states, uh, which require special international attention. Our, by our efforts in 2022, the 77th ses session of General UN Assembly took a resolution on sustainable mountain development. And our initiative, the given resolution announced 2023-2027 as a, a five-year action plan on development of the mountainous regions. With great optimism, we expect joint actions in the global, regional, and national levels. Dear Azraat Mahmoudovna, dear guests, the subject of today's forum is uh, rather uh, modern and timely and uh, directed to uh, create favorable conditions for younger generation and sustainable development in the future. I express hope that the forum will facilitate to develop new initiatives and general approaches in the solution of the actual problems in the modern society. I'm confident that by joint efforts, we'll contribute to in the course of uh, sustainable development and environmental protection. I'd like to wish forum participants and its organizers fruitful work and uh, success. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. At today's event, it is Activity. Youth uh, play a great role in climatic and ecological issues. The youth of Central Asia is not an exclusion. Let us listen to the discussions and the point of view from the children themselves and also the youth of Central Asia. Please look at the monitor now. Even though our borders are separated, the issues are common. It affects the ecosystems of the whole world. Therefore, we must address environmental challenges together. I live next to the city where wasteland live, and I like and I like no one else. I feel the negative consequences and the impact of the waste on the health of the women and children. Nowadays, the world-related issues in the Central Asian region and in Uzbekistan have a negative impact on all of us. 
The proposal of young people to solve this problem is to reduce the amount of water used in agriculture, which makes up to 70%. Only we, young generation, can protect our environment. As Isaac Rizakov said, if you are clean, if I'm clean, then society will be clean. My eco-activism will help the development of Kyrgyzstan and help to prevent future environmental problems. One of the main problems is melting of glaciers. We need to start with influencing the people's consciousness, showing them the importance of preserving the environment. After all, if we don't understand and realize the seriousness, we do not take responsibility onto, we will not make any change. I believe that if currently there is a tiny possibility of avoiding a disaster and restoration of the nature, this is the main impact of eco-activism. Among the Central Asian countries, an important problem is the dying up of the RLC. The drying up of the RLC affects many countries in Central Asia. I want our planet to have clean water. We need to save and protect water resources. We are taught to keep environment clean starting from elementary school. I advise to do the same in all Central Asian countries. If I see a trash in the courtyard of our school, I will definitely pick it up and throw it away in a trash bin. We must preserve nature, the earth for our children, the sun, the green trees, to keep the water clean and the air clean. I want all the children of the world to be friendly. We must solve it. Who, if not we, if not us? All environmental activists in Central Asia unite and act together to solve the environmental problems. If not we, who? We would like to thank our eco-activists. We can see that uh, they um, have also a great interest uh, to protect uh, the environment. Now it's time to listen to our international guests as well who are taking part at our event, the experts of our forum. Please let give me the opportunity to give the floor to the uh, Ms. Tatiana Malchan, United Nations Under Secretary General, Executive Secretary of the UN on Economic Commission for Europe and International Forum, Children and News. Thank you so much, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is my extreme pleasure to share with you some of our experience from the United Nations on how we can engage and enable young people to effectively channel their passion and inspiration for maximum results when it comes to climate. And as we have seen just now in this wonderful video, uh, it's exactly the youth uh, who are the fr on the front line when it comes to our future. Climate change is one of the most pressing challenges of our time. It is a global crisis that affects us all, regardless of age, background or nationality. We all can see and feel the impacts. The number of countries suffering from drought, wildfires, floods and other natural hazards caused by climate change is ever increasing. When it comes to addressing this critical issue, young people have a key role to play. Today's youth has grown up in a world where climate change is an imminent threat. Young people are very mindful that their very future is at stake and this drives their passion for climate action. And 
This unique viewpoint challenged traditional thinking and inspires new ways of, of approaching climate solutions. And um, I would like in particular to share with you some of the activities and the views that we have at the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, uh, one of the five regional commissions with 56 member states spanning across Europe, North America and Central Asia, including the countries participating today at this um, discussions. Young people have been really instrumental in raising awareness about climate change. Through their effective use of social media, young activists have not only raised awareness, but also demanded accountability from governments and corporations and pushed for greener policy. Furthermore, young innovators are developing cutting edge solutions to combat climate change, whether it is in a renewable energy, fashion, agriculture, or transport. Their creativity and willingness to challenge the status quo are essential in devising new approaches to mitigate the impacts of climate change. We really must join forces with young to fight climate change. So how best we can engage with by empowering young climate activists? And again, at UNIC, we strive and we do this in uh, multiple ways. First, we seek to ensure that young people have a seat at the table as a meeting platform, as a convening platform, UNICE facilitates youth pre-meetings ahead of selected intergovernmental meetings. For example, youth consultations were held ahead of our regional forum on sustainable development. And also the youth perspective were integrated into the ninth environment for Europe ministerial conference. Of course, we are not the only ones taking this approach in the UN family. Uh, we have also the UN Youth Climate Summit, where the active participation of youth represented in the Conference of the Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and other any venues provide meaningful ways for young people to make their voices heard and engage directly with policymakers. Second, we put the concerns of young people on the agenda. At UNICE, we incorporate youth-relevant issues in different areas of work, for example, on our strategy of education for sustainable development and in our statistical work through the task force on statistics on children and adolescent and youth. And third, uh, we seek to ensure that our work makes a difference for young people. For example, globally, the leading cause of death for children and young people aged 5 to 29 years is road accidents. And UNICE is improving road safety standards in countries worldwide to reduce these dramatic numbers. But really, who, who is better to guide our efforts than young people themselves? Last year, we hosted at UNICE Youth Dialogue, which governed more than 300 youth representatives from across the region, and their message was clear. They call for more inclusive governance and policy development including meaningful youth participation in multilateral discussions. So education is really key to empower and enable youth to engage in policy design and implementation. And in this context, I really call on all governments of our region to enhance their efforts towards comprehensive climate curricula in schools and higher education institutions. We are happy at UNICE to share our extensive experience and best practices on how this can be done. It is also very important that governments encourage youth leadership and participation in decision-making processes related to climate policies and solutions. We host conventions such as Aarhus Convention on access to information, public participation in decision-making, and access to justice in environmental matter. We really stand ready to share these practices on how really to meaningfully um, engage in consultations. Finally, I would like to talk about an area where we have worked very closely with the host country, with Uzbekistan, over the past few years, and this is innovation. We strongly believe that innovation is key to developing new technologies and tools that can reduce our carbon footprint and mitigate or even reverse environmental damage. And high education and research institutions play a key role in fostering the innovation capacity of young people and in channeling this capacity towards the developing of cutting edge solutions that can fight climate change. For this, 
climate and sustainability consideration need to, to be part of the agenda of the curriculum. But it's also important to support young entrepreneurs and startups through mentorship, financing, but also institutions such as business incubators and accelerators. We have published an innovation for sustainable development review of Uzbekistan in 2022, and we have really worked together in incorporating this recommendation into the new innovation strategy. Uh, I think this is a very good example how we can support meaningful participation of the youth in different areas, and in particular in the fighting climate change. And uh, this is a good example, and I hope that I have uh, been able to really convey some of the practical ideas of how we can enable young people to channel their passion, their energy for climate action in the most effective way. Once again, thank you, and let's work together and let's engage together in addressing climate change. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Malchan. Now we give the floor to the director of the Global Forum on Forest, Ms. Juliette Biao, director of UNFF Secretariat. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to join today uh, this event that demonstrates the important role children and youth play in addressing the pressing climate change that face our planet today. The summer of 2023 marked the hottest period on record since global tracking began in 1880, according to NASA. These alarming temperatures translate into devastating real-world consequences from wildfires in Canada to extreme floods in Europe and Asia, imperiling lives and livelihood worldwide. The urgent need of action on climate change is undeniable. In this critical juncture, it is imperative to engage and empower young people as active contributors to the climate solutions. The event today provide a great opportunity for countries in the region to exchange best practices, foster collaboration, and strengthen partnerships in their endeavors to support children and youth in addressing climate change. In, con in this connection, I wish to express my gratitude to the First Lady of Uzbekistan, Her Excellency, Mr. Ziruat Mirzi Yoyeva for her gracious invitation for me to join this event and for her unwavering support and commitment to empower young people to take action against climate change. Under her leadership, the Zamin Foundation strives to empower young people by providing them with the knowledge and skills they need to make a positive impact and become agents of change in the fight against climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, deforestation currently account for 11% of, of all carbon emissions, surpassing emissions from all means of transportation combined. Each year, forests and landscapes absorb 11 billion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere destroying the, these natural habitat reverses this process, turning landscape from carbon sink to carbon sources, posing a significant threat to us all. The United Nations Forum on Forests, UNFF, as the only global intergovernmental process platform, policy platform for forests, is committed to promote sustainable forest management and contribute to climate actions. The, forum, the, the forum's children and youth major group serve as a platform for the young people to engage with the UNFF process and share their perspective at the global level on a wide range of forest-related issues. 
The Youth Call for Action adopted by Children and Youth Major Group in 2022 demonstrates the youth commitment to build a green, healthy, and resilient future with forests. The youth are urging our generation to unite in collective, in collective effort to add their mission in fulfilling their commitment. To achieve this, we need to ensure all youth have inclusive access to quality forest education, decent work opportunities, and political participation and representation in the forest sector. The UNFF serves as a critical, a crucial part, a platform for translating this call for action into tangible results. I extend a warm invitation to all the first lady is, ladies here present to attend the 90th session of the United Nations Forum of Forest, the high level uh, event that will take place on 9th of May in New York uh, in 2024. You will agree with me, your excellencies, that youth and women are among the, the, the key game changer for sustainable future. Imagine the signal you will send to the whole world if you, First Ladies, you make your voice heard at the 90th session of the United Nations Forum of Forests. Forests impacts all aspects of our life and forests contribute also to address issues related to climate change. What you are saying today is will resonate at the United Nations Forum on Forests in May in May 9th, 2024. With your permission, we will follow up with, with your respective permanent representative in New York to facilitate your attendance. It is time, First Ladies, to make your voice heard on forests. And thank you in advance for accepting. The UNFF, uh, the UN, uh, the 19th session also will offer a forum to explore strategies for empowering and engaging youth to feel, fulfill their missions. Let's sustain the meaningful dialogue we initiated today on empowering youth and individuals for climate action and elevate it to a global scale at UNFF 19. Together, we can forge a path toward a sustainable future in harmony with nature. I thank you for your attention. Many thanks, Ms. Biao, for your speech. And we have uh, the video message of the UNF Executive Director, Inger Anderson. Please pay attention to the screens. My thanks to Uzbekistan's First Lady, Ms. Zirurat Miziroyeva, for the invitation to address the Zamin International Public Foundation event on climate change, children and youth. I'm very grateful for the ongoing collaboration between UNEP and the Zamin Foundation. Greetings also to government representatives and to my UN colleagues. The world is in the grip of an intensifying climate crisis. Temperature records toppled in 2023. Floods, heat waves and wildfires caused misery to vulnerable communities many of them children and youth. The upcoming climate talks in Dubai must be the moment when the world's most powerful commit fully to protecting the world's most vulnerable, both by reducing greenhouse gases and by financing efforts to adapt to climate impacts already locked in. The climate crisis is an integral part of what we at UNEP call the triple planetary crisis, the crisis of climate change, the crisis of nature and biodiversity loss, and the crisis of pollution and waste. And all of these stem from humanity's pursuit of high carbon resource hungry and wasteful growth. Uzbekistan and other countries in the region know all too well about these crises. Uzbekistan is amongst the countries most vulnerable to climate change, to land degradation and desertification. The frequency of sand and dust storms has increased. Air quality, public health and agriculture and biodiversity are suffering. The government of Uzbekistan is stepping up with measures to address these challenges, including through collaboration with us at UNEP 
on air quality. My deep thanks for that. So friends, such issues affect children and youth strongly today and far into the future, but it is a future that children and youth can change, that many of, the, of you are already trying to change. Across the globe, youth are advocating, protesting, and leaning on, on the universal right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment to challenge companies and governments in courts. Environmental education is a huge importance to provide coming generations with the skills and knowledge that they need to become agents of change, not just to become agents of protesting. We want the next generation to be brave leaders in government, to be scientists and innovators who dream up new and better ways of living in harmony with the planet, to be the voices of the environmental conscience in corporations, to start their own businesses, providing green and sustainable products and services. And that is why I'm so pleased that UNEP and Azamin International Foundations have worked together on topics such as the Eco Schools Project, now affiliated with the Foundation for Environmental Education. And I fully expect that our recently signed memorandum of understanding to further strengthen our partnership on addressing and tackling air pollution impacts on the environment and on human health, on restoring ecosystems, and on equipping children and youth with every tool they need to engineer the future that they want. I wish you all a productive forum. Thank you. <clears throat> we would like to thank Ms. Anderson for the video message. And now we would like to give the floor to the uh, special representative of the UN Secretary General for Central Asia, head of the Regional Center for Pre Preventive Diplomacy for Central Asia, Mr. Kaha Innadze. Thank you. Your Excellencies, Mrs. Mazioeva, dear First Ladies, dear representatives of the governments of Central Asia and the United Nations, dear forum participants, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me thank the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Zamin Foundation, Her Excellency Mrs. Rodhan. Mahmoud Abamirziyoyo for the invitation to participate in this significant international forum. I would like to emphasize that the Zamin Foundation was founded in 2020 during the difficult time of the pandemic, and since then it has been holding large-scale annual conferences on the most precising topics, such as issues of inclusion of the disabled children, children's rights to education, ensuring children's rights to a healthy environment. And today we are also talking about the equally important topic of recognizing the role of children and youth in the fight against negative climate change. Here, first of all, I would like to say about the significance of the UN Convention on the Rights of uh, the uh, Children. And uh, yesterday I was in Moynak and uh, I saw the uh, difficult situation in the RLC and we are spending several hours to be transferred to one point from another point. And we don't have the 80% of the water in the RLC. And we've took away the future of our children. So I would like to one more time highlight the UN Convention on the Rights of Children. This is a document of uh, 1989, which sets out the rights of children, including to life, health, health, clean drinking water, as well as survival and development. In August of this year, the Committee on the Rights of the Child which monitors the implementation of this convention ratified by the 196 countries, including all Central Asian countries, published a new guide for states, the so-called general comment, which specified that the government takes the responsibility for the protection of the children, but also for the forecasting and the prevention of different kinds of actions in the future that can lead to the problems with the children's rights. And I would like to talk about the uh, regional as well, uh, climatic challenges that we need to pay attention to. And so we may uh, talk about the loss of biodiversity in the Central Asia. And I think that we may increase uh, the situation by increasing the ecological education and the awareness among youth and children to different kinds of climatic initiatives and the programs. Children and young people make up, according to various 
estimates from 40 to 60 percent of the region's population. Imagine how they can influence the situation with a proper level of knowledge. Imagine how their actions to protect the environment will change, how carefully they will treat nature and in endangered species. Therefore, the creation and promotion of platforms that enable children and young people to personally participate in nature protection programs, make decisions, offer ideas, and contribute to the fight against the negative effects of climate change is a prerequisite for solving global and regional problems of climate change and environmental pollution. I would like to inform you that there are also relevant platforms in the United Nations. Thus, uh, the Youth Advisory Group on Climate Change on the Dushanbe, for instance, the presence of the five countries in Dushanbe highlighted the uh, most uh, efficient direction for the cooperation and our regional center of the United Nations that I'm happy to lead also pays attention to work with the youth uh, with the uh, ecology issues in Central Asia and the uh, combating the negative footprints of uh, our activities through the preventive diplomacy, through the dialogue, women's dialogue, and the strategy for the uh, supporting of the cooperation between the uh, countries of Central Asia on the water management and the uh, protection of climate change, climate, environmental conditions. So, uh, in November 2022, in New York, with the support of the Regional Center and within the framework of our Women's Dialogue, the first joint session with the UN Committee on the Peace Building was held, dedicated to promoting the role of women in combating the effects of climate change, where much attention was also paid to the role of girls and youth, specifically in the issues of the climate change and increasing the awareness of the youth on that issues. So we also have the water dialogue and we also conducted the uh, seminar on the uh, gender equality for the effective management with the water resources so with a specific attention to in attracting the women and the youth. All the uh, events that we are conducting here have the regional character. All the countries of the region, region participate, in particular Uzbekistan as well. Taking this opportunity, I would like to emphasize that the regional center is grateful to the Zamin Foundation for all the initiatives it promotes, and we're ready to support such activities at the regional level and suggest considering the possibility of holding joint events in future, in 2024. The name of the fund Zamin in translation from Uzbek means the foundation, platform, and opportunity for growth. So let's support our children and young people in their development and the role they can play today in the fight against negative climate change in Central Asia. The role we took not only from the ancestors, this is the loans from our children. So thank you very much one more time for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. Let me give the floor to the next speaker, Regional Director of UNICEF on Europe and Central Asia, Regina Dominicis. Your Excellency, Madame Mirzoyeva, First Lady of Uzbekistan and Chairperson of the Zamin International Public Foundation, Excellencies, Government Representative, UN colleagues and children and young people, it is an honor for UNICEF to be today with you. I extend my gratitude once again to Her Excellency Madame Yusigoyeva for her leadership in advancing the rights of children and young people and for remaining a champion of their engagement with climate action in Uzbekistan and in Central Asia. Today's the forum uh, converges around the four critical elements. So the first is the leadership. Protecting children from the harmful effect of climate change requires definitely this decisive action. And Your Excellency, thank you for convening a strong cohort of leaders today. The second theme is the child and youth-led climate action. Globally, young people, as has been said, are advocating for being their agency in climate action. 
This October, I had the chance to participate in a youth eco camp in Samarkand, which has brought together young people from the, across the Central Asia. Their recommendations have been really, really significant, extremely sharp, and have helped inform the Central Asia strategy for promoting a culture for sustainable development and participation of children and youth in the climate agenda. The platform is creating real opportunity for children and younger people, and we would like to thank you once again for these endeavors. The third is certainly a regional approach. Climate change transcends borders, as has been said, and collaboration is absolutely critical and essential for mitigating and also for adapting. This forum facilitates cross-country exchanges, acknowledging that the whole Central Asia faces the burden of climate change. UNICEF research shows that half of children in Europe and Central Asia are exposed to high heat wave frequency. And this is the double of the global average of one in four children. In Central Asia, more than nine in 10 children are also exposed to excessive level of air pollution and almost eight in 10 are exposed to water scarcity. I don't need to comment because data speaks for an urgent action and this is very clear. The fourth element that will be as actually used as a pillar to leverage further discussion in this forum is the stewardship in climate action. Mainstreaming climate change and environmental education into school curricula is key to equip the new generation of children and youth with the skills that are required to adapt to this changing climate. UNICEF remains committed to, of course, to support all the governments in these efforts. And Your Excellency, Your Excellency, let me conclude by saying to the leader gathered here today, thank you for continuing to place children and younger people at the center of the climate action. But I would like also to thank some of the speakers for having mentioned the needs in Gaza. And I would like to reassure you that we continue to work friendly for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. 40% of all casualties in Gaza are children. And this is absolutely an unprecedented and tragic number of child deaths in any recent conflict. To go back to our younger people, we really urge you to remain courageous, to remain brave and catalyst of change in your community. Indeed, you have said it correctly, if not you, who? You are the one that could keep the beauty, the hope and the peace in this world. So continue with your action, with your energy, with your creativity to provide all of us with solutions. We are very proud to stand beside you. Together, there is no doubt that we can build a more sustainable and brighter future for everyone. I wish you really a successful forum. And once again, thank you for having UNICEF with you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Domenici. Thank you for your uh, speech. Now I would like to give the floor to the Vice President of the Fund of Ecological Education, Nikos Petru. Your Excellency, First Lady of the Republic of Pakistan, Ms. Zizoyeva, Excellencies, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, dear young leader, dear future leader. It is my honor and great pleasure to represent the Foundation for Environmental Education at the International Forum Children and Youth in Action, Climate Change in Central Asia. On behalf of our foundation, I wish to convey our admiration and thanks to the Ministry of Ecology, Environmental Protection and Climate Change, the Ministry of Free School, Free School Education, the Ministry of Youth, Policy and Sports, and of course, to our fee member in Uzbekistan, the Zamin International Public Foundation, for your partnership and inspirational leadership on the greening education agenda. While it is globally recognized that quality education for sustainable development, or ESD as it is known, is essential to build climate resilience, adaptation and mitigation, Uzbekistan is one of the few countries globally which is taking the lead on showing how the methodologies and pedagogies of ESD and climate change education 
can be mainstreamed into the national education systems. Through our three education programs, and in particular Eco Schools, uh, the largest such program in the world for almost 30 years, we are now working with over 20 million young people in 73 countries in all continents, empowering youth to address sustainability and climate issues from the bottom up. What we have found is that by implementing substantial climate action projects in schools using place-based and project-based ESD pedagogy, not only are the barriers to education removed, but the quality of teaching and learning is also transformed and climate action also engages the surrounding communities. In recognition of this work, uh, FEE has been asked to co-lead UNESCO's Greening Education Partnership Pillar 1 on greening schools, working together with a large number of institutions throughout the globe. Through this work, we hope to use our expertise in the global youth movement to transform education, addressing both the modern challenges of sustainable development and climate change, and also the deep-rooted triple crisis of equity, quality, and relevance in education. We believe that the recent national strategy and roadmap, which was co-developed in partnership between ministries and young people from eco schools, will become an exemplary model and lead the way to the integration of quality education for sustainable development and climate action in the region and beyond. We look forward to working together on this journey and encourage others to follow the great example shown by Uzbekistan in greening education systems around the world. I wish you good success in this forum and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Petro. We thank you so much uh, uh, for your speech. And also, we'd like to thank the guests for their speeches. Now, we would like to switch to uh, presentations of the uh, government institutions of Central Asian countries. Now, I would like to give the floor to the host country which initiated development of the regional strategy and uh, carrying out this forum. Now I give the floor to the Minister of Ecology and Protection of Environment, Climate Change of Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Aziz Abduhakimov. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, Head of Delegations, our dear children and youth. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Uzbekistan. On behalf of the government of the Republic of Uzbekistan, I express my great, great gratitude to our colleagues, ministers, heads of delegations of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan, as well as international partners, UNICEF, UNESCO, UNTP, and FAO. I would like to express special gratitude to Zamin Public Foundation, which is a vivid example of the third sector and the voice of civil society, raising important public issues and uniting state bodies. The triple planetary crisis, characterized by the loss of biodiversity, waste pollution, and climate change, undoubtedly pose, possess new challenges and difficulties for the entire international community, especially for the countries of Central Asia. After all, our region is the most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. But these challenges also present a lot of opportunities for combining efforts, creative thinking, and innovative solutions, as well as for the unity of our countries. I would like to provide one example of this kind of cooperation. The President of the Republic of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Shavkat Mirziyoyi, initiated the strategic initiative for development of and creation of the uh, Central Asian University for the analysis of the uh, environment and the climate change. Green University, where all the youth of Central Asian countries will be educating, educated uh, together on the climate change and the environmental issues. And together they will be developing the solutions for the most important ecological challenges and issues. Last year at this forum, I signed, the Republic of Uzbekistan signed the Declaration on Children, Youth and Climate Change. And today we demonstrate the transition from words to action by adopting the regional strategy for promoting a culture of sustainable development and involving children and youth in the climate agenda. Moreover, this strategy was developed by you, our dear youth, 
And this shows that the future of the ecology of Central Asia is in safe hands. Nature, as well as friendship between our countries, knows no borders. I'm sure that together, by combining our efforts, we will be able to overcome even the most difficult challenges of climate change. You can be sure that we, adults and members of the government, listen to your voice with great responsibility and will do our best to protect your right to a healthy environment and ensure the bright future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Aziz Abdukharovich. Now we would like to give the floor to the Deputy Prime Minister of the Tajikistan Republic, Malubokhan Satryon. Madam Ziorat Mzayeva, Your Excellencies, the dear participants of today's forum, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, Tajikistan Republic, I would like to thank the organizers of today's event for the uh, warm welcoming. The Republic of Tajikistan actively supports the cooperation on the global and the regional level the cooperation with the neighboring countries on different directions, in particular, the protection of the environment, the climate change, transit to the sustainable green economy, and the formation of the new ecological thinking and ideology of the population. I'm sure that the attracting and increasing the powers of the youth and the children in different questions dedicated to the finding a solution to the climate issues through their active participation in different kind of events uh, as a positive uh, members will provide a great input. In this regard, our country supports the application of the uh, norms of the Convention on the Children's Rights through uh, the uh, comments, uh, general comments from August 22nd, 2023, number 26 on the uh, rights of children. The uh, government of the Republic of Tajikistan also adopted the, the uh, practical measures for the development of the legislation, the state policy, and the uh, implementation of the uh, framework uh, convention of the United Nations on the climate change and the uh, Paris Agreement. And so we support the cooperation in the direction of the, on those directions with all the uh, stakeholders. We to take different kind of measures on the regional level. For instance, the regional strategy on the uh, promoting the culture of sustainable development uh, and attracting the children and youth for the climate agenda for 2023 and 2030 is one of the key foundations for ensuring the constructive cooperation of the governmental bodies of Central Asian countries and the uh, educational facilities, as well as other stakeholders. We need to highlight that the uh, ensuring the access to uh, the uh, water, the protection of uh, the uh, natural resources and adaptation and uh, mitigating to the uh, climate change and the protection of the ecosystems and supporting the biodiversity is the prior directions in the policy of the President of the Republic of Tajikistan, the Honorable Emma Mali Rahman. Taking that into account, we actively support different kind of ideas uh, and we support the creation of the political dialogue between the countries of the region in the process for adopting the decisions on the issues of the climate change and the ecological topics. The uh, finding of solutions to these kind of problems, it was mentioned by our president on the 78th uh, General Assembly of the United Nations, requires the uh, deep international cooperation. In Tajikistan, we've created the uh, le legislative and institutional foundation for the actions dedicated to finding the solution to the problems with the climate change. To increase the ecological awareness, in the education of population on all the levels in the Republic of Tajikistan, we implement the state complex program for development of the ecological education and increasing the awareness and the culture for the period of 2021, 2025. This program reflects the main steps of the formation of uh, the education and the culture of the population on all the levels, in particular, the uh, preschool, school, uh, vocational, and the higher educational level. The ecological culture and the increasing the awareness activate, activate the uh, informative activities uh, in the sphere of the protection of the environment, increases the uh, level of uh, public uh, 
understanding and uh, pre on the different kind of issues of the climate change. We t understand the importance of the greening and the ecological issues on the annual basis so with the attraction of the youth, uh, volunteers of Tajikistan. We also plant different kind of uh, trees and the plantations. Uh, we are sure that uh, only through the uh, mutual decisions, uh, mutual cooperation, we may find the solutions uh, to the climatical climate issues. We need to highlight that uh, the uh, conduction of the uh, mutual regional events, in particular, like today's forum, will lead to the great input for deepening the, and the, enriching the dialogue for the finding the solutions to the problems dedicated to the climate change and the successful realization of all the strategic documents, international, regional, and national level. At the end, I would like to wish success on achieving of the planet goals. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your speech. And now we would like to give the floor to the next speaker, to the Minister of the Education and Science of the Republic of Kazakhstan, the Madam Aida Balaiva. Good afternoon, dear forum members. Assalamu alaikum, Zirat Hanum. I welcome you to such an important and relevant event. The First Lady of uh, Turkey, Madam Erdogan, and Jabili Hanum, the First Lady of uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the First Lady of the Kyrgyz Republic, Aigul Japarva. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to such, such an important and relevant element event. Thank you for the warm welcome and the high level of organization of the forum. The issues raised today concerning the active involvement of children and use of the countries of the region and in the climate agenda are vital. To do this, of course, it's necessary to develop environmental education, not only in an inter-country format, but also systematically at the global level. In this regard, it seems necessary, first of all, to actively support and promote the UNESCO initiative on environmental education. Our colleagues have set an ambitious goal to make environmental education a major component of curricula in all countries by 2025. UNESCO is working with all its member states to support curriculum reform and monitor progress and disseminating the knowledge, skills, values, and approaches needed to bring about positive change and protect the future of our planet. Realizing the urgent need for environmental education at the systematic level, President of Kazakhstan, Kasim Jamark Tokayev, instructed in 2020 to gradually introduce the subject of environmental education in schools of Kazakhstan. This demonstrates that every country and the world community as a whole understand that, that humanity will have hope for the future only if our generation teaches young people and children to protect the environment. That is why it is so important to support their participation in environmental activities and initiatives to involve the younger generation in the settlement of environmental problems and climate challenges. Due to the large influence of anthropogenic factors and dependence on natural resources, our region is highly dependent on climate change. At the same time, Central Asia is warming faster than the global average, and according to forecast, it will experience more frequent extreme weather events, changes in the nature of precipita precipitation and increased drought. drought. These processes have already begun and led to soil degradation, affect the distribution of water resources and air pollution. These factors of pressure on ecosystems in the coming decades may put some territories of the region on the verge of an ecological catastrophe. Already today, they have a significant impact on the socioeconomic well-being of the population and political interaction between our countries. In these conditions, the formation of systematic ecological thinking in children and young people is primary task. 
In fact, we are talking about preserving our future because children and ecology are two of its important factors. I would like to note that our country is making serious steps in the field of climate policy. Thus, we have achieved a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in 2021 by 10% from the 1990s level. Let me remind you that Kazakhstan has committed itself to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 15%. In February of this year, the strategy for achieving carbon neutrality of Kazakhstan until 2060 was approved. The National Carbon Quota Plan for 2022-2025 and the Carbon Budget for 2023-2025 have been approved. The roadmap for the integration of Kazakhstan's greenhouse gas emissions trading system with the European EDA Yes, so for 2022-2026 was also approved. Uh, the initiative of the head of state work continues on planting 2 billion trees in the forest fund. In 2022, 282.9 million seedlings, 111.5 thousand hectares were planted. This year, plans to plant 410 million seedlings uh, according to the results of uh, spring planting plant. Separate work is underway to plant the saxaul on the drained bottom of the Aral Sea. In 2022, feet of reclamation work were uh, carried out on an area of 250,000 hectares. Work on 250,000 hectares is planned for 2023, including 52.1 thousand hectares covered during this spring period. On January 2nd of 2022, the, 2023, the law on Florida was signed as well as laws on amendments to the Code of Administrative Violations and the Criminal Code on strengthening the responsibility for, responsibility for environmental violations and vandalism were adopted. We are ready to share our experience. I'm sure that the forum's work will give a new impetus to our cooperation in solving environmental problems in the region. I'm glad that young people and children are becoming more and more active in nature conservation and are ready to contribute to the fight against global challenges from an early age. Careful attitude to the surrounding world is becoming a global trend. This is evidenced by the active participation of children and youth in numerous volunteer actions aimed at creating and protecting nature. In Kazakhstan, more than 2,000 young volunteers were involved in this direction from the beginning of this year. In addition, 30 small grants up to 300,000 NGE each were issued aimed at supporting individual efforts of citizens in solving specific tasks in the field of ecology. More than 70 eco campaigns were held covering more than 120,000 Kazakhstans of different ages. During the implementation of this eco project, during the year, representatives of youth organizations in each region organized environmental actions covering more than 110,000 young people, more than 20,000 trees have been planted. I propose in this direction to develop and encourage cooperation in the exchange of experience, seminars, training courses, and regional actions to protect the environment. I also propose to jointly hold such events and because uh, we have a great potential. That's why we propose to develop the concrete cases to organize the uh, interregional competitions uh, on the climate change in the Central Asia countries, the risks and the consequences. In turn, information cooperation on the coverage of joint environmental actions between our countries will also play an important role. Central Asia as a region with a unique ecological heritage needs a powerful movement of children and youth who will actively and massively participate in the uh, conservation and protection of nature. Dear colleagues, I would like to urge everyone present to support and inspire children and youth to successful implementation of their environmental projects. Together, we can make a huge contribution to the preservation of our planet. Thank you very much for your attention.
Большое спасибо, Аида Галыбовна. Далее... Thank you very much, Aida Galivovna. Now we give the floor to the Minister of uh, Education and Science of Kyrgyz Republic, uh, Mr. Dr. Kulkinderbaeva. For me, it's a great pleasure to take part at this forum of this high level on behalf of Ministry of uh, Education and Science of Kyrgyz Republic. I would like uh, to uh, express my gratitude uh, for this uh, uh, warm welcome uh, of the Foundation of Zamin and the government of Uzbekistan at this very high level. Let me uh, also say that the regional strategy for promoting a culture of sustainable development and involving children and youth in the climate agenda is extremely necessary and timely initiative in the context of a rapidly changing world. Children and young people are the symbol of hope and guarantee of the future that we want. At the same time, the future of new generations is associated with the growing environmental and climatic risks, which will be increasingly gravated in the region. Realizing this, we emphasize our determination to unite our efforts to support children and youth and work together to implement this strategy. We all know about the scale of the problems associated with the climate change and ecological balance. It is truly gigantic and affects all spheres of activity, but most importantly, it threatens the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals to reach the Kyrgyz Republic among many countries has confirmed its commitment. Being committed to combating climate change and accelerating the transition to climate resilience, I would like to note that in Kyrgyzstan we pay a big attention. In Kyrgyzstan we have developed strategic priorities for climate change education, and we have developed it and included there the issues related to education and professional development of teachers and broad public awareness on ecological matters and ecological education and forming ecological new competences. Already today, in the country, the issues of climate change, green skills, sustainable development are integrated into the state educational standards for preschool and school education in the subjects standards of school education, and not only in the standards of uh, national sciences, but also in the standards of social education areas. Currently, with the support of the donors, in particular of the World Bank, in all schools, we are carrying out the capacity building for teachers. Kyrgyzstan is an active supporter of the UNESCO Education for Sustainable Development Initiative, in the framework action program for the period up to 2030. And within the framework of the UN development program, the Ministry of Education and Science implemented a program to increase awareness and understanding of the Rio conventions for the secondary education system of the Kyrgyz Republic, which included the development and publication in Russian and Kyrgyz languages and localized version of the textbook, innovative textbook, Climate Box for Kyrgyz Republic. Each school received this Climate Box. And this year, a methodological guide for extracurricular work along the Great Silk Road to Peace and Friendship was published. In development of it, the colleagues took part, the methodological experts of three countries took part, which are neighboring with each other. It is Ferdana Valley, methodologists, and developers are Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. And now uh, these uh, students can discuss the questions reflected in this guide and have a dialogue in uh, the 
physical or maybe remotely. One of the developments is sustainable development for the future. In the framework of the discussion, they were recommended to organize an event uh, and raise the question which says, is youth responsible for achieving the, uh, the sustainable development goals? Can young people change the world for the better in the name of achieving the SDG? The adoption of uh, our strategy is one of the important answers to this question. In the framework of, of the implementation of UNESCO initiative, if uh, we are not only changing the content of the education, but also creating conditions for changing the educational environment. For example, Kurdistan has accumulated experience in promoting the safety of the educational environment, a standard for the safety of the educational environment that has been developed in the country. And in addition, we have been in, including it into the regulatory legal acts, including some pins, to comprehensively ensure the environmental, physical, and physiological safety of students, the formation of health, preserving, developing educational environment, and that ensures all necessary aspects, and also uh, to develop a health-preserving, developing educational environment. Appropriate changes were made to the public procurement system. Since climate change issues affect all aspects of life, currently this component has been integrated into the educational program of universities in Kyrgyz Republic while carrying out uh, uh, leading regional universities. So dear participants of the forum, the policy of Kyrgyz Republic is, co coincides with the global policy. And also, uh, we are developing necessary agenda and share international, um, and share the international goals. In order to develop and open more sort of startups which allow the Kyrgyzstan to address these issues to facilitate development of the national development strategy until 2040 and the concept of Kyrgyzstan is a country of green economy developed by in 2018 in the national program for the development of the green economy which set the framework for the systemic integration of climate change issues into almost all Years of economy for its green. Every year we launch this kind of programs initiative. It is a presidential initiative. Just on us, every uh, child, every citizen takes part in uh, planting green trees. I would like green seconds. I would like to say that um, in achieving carbon neutrality. The Kyrgyz Republic nationality determined contribution to global efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions developed in 2021. It's an effect which outlines directions for low carbon transformation until 2030. Taking into account the national priorities of sustainable development. The work on finalizing the long term strategy for of carbon neutrality by 2050 is actively continuing. At the same time, we are developing a national adaptation program for the main most vulnerable sectors. We need to highlight that Kyrgyzstan pays a great attention to the implementation and con construction of a long-term strategy for financing the fight against climate change in accordance with the national funding structure. Development of mountain regions. Within the framework of the UN General Assembly resolution, the First Lady also highlighted that the Kyrgyzstan is uh, the one of the initiators. And uh, in the framework of the UN General Assembly resolution, sustainable mountain development, adopted on December 14, 2022, at the initiative of the Kyrgyz Republic 
2023-2027 was uh, proclaimed the fifth anniversary of actions for the development of mountain regions in order to give a new impetus to the efforts of the international community aimed at solving the problems and challenges of mountain countries. Dear ladies and gentlemen, efforts to combat climate change will not be successful without the meaningful participation of children and young people. In 2022, at the UNFCCC Conference of the Parties in Sharm el-Sheikh, at the Youth Climate Dialogue Forum, young people presented their key requirements, paying special attention to affordable, high-quality and conceptual education and training on climate change, adaptation and sustainability, empowerment actions, climate finance. Within the framework of the Jashal Climate Project, with the support of the European Union, the youth of Kyrgyzstan were able to participate in the uh, event and convey their vision to the international society. This was the result of a systematic process that involved regional youth group. The voice of youth was largely ignored in early national nationally determined contributions. Now many countries actively involve young people and use in the development of their conceptual programs on the climate change through consultations, awareness raising, and information campaigns. Currently, young people are actively involved in discussing, for example, the country's position within the framework of the Stockholm Plus 50 process. They are ready to participate in research and activities to contain the temperature rise and reduce the negative effects of climate change. On June 5th, of 2023, the Ministry of Natural Resources, Ecology and Technical Supervision of the Kyrgyz Republic joined the UN Declaration on the Rights of Children, Youth and Combating Climate Change, obliging to uh, consider the possibility of intensifying efforts to respect, support and take into account the rights of children and youth in the implementation of the uh, Paris Agreements at all levels promoting the active participation of children and youth in processes related to climate change. In June of 2021, Kyrgyzstan hosted the first youth conference on climate change, local conference of youth. The youth conference was held in the country and the Central Asian region for the first time and was organized by the public association Students of Kyrgyzstan for a Green Economy. Together with the youth team, representatives of other youth organizations and universities, students of other countries. On October 7th of 2023, on the eve, at the beginning of the 28th uh, UN FCCC conference of the parties and the local conference of youth Kyrgyzstan 2023 2023 was held climate change conferences held with the official support of the United Nations empower young people to influence key decisions on climate change issues it's very important for us to directly get the opinion of youth on the measures taken to accelerate action to combat climate change. And therefore, we welcome the process of youth participation in making climate and environmentally significant decisions. I'm convinced that the implementation of the regional strategy signed today to promote the culture of sustainable development and the involvement of children and youth of Central Asian countries in the climate agenda will shape active actions to combat climate change, bringing innovative and non-standard approaches to our work. Therefore, I wish all of us constructive, creative, and fruitful work on the implementation of this strategy and action plan. I really hope that this platform will be efficient for the implementation of the most innovative and use ecological initiative in Central Asia. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much for your speech. Now we would like to give the floor to the Deputy Minister of Health and Medical Industry of Turkmenistan, Mr. Murad Mamedov. Her Excellencies, Zirat Mahmudovna, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear participants. Let me express my gratitude for the opportunity to participate in today's meeting and share with you information about the activities carried out on climate change and disaster risk reduction in Turkmenistan. I'm proud to address you today as part of an important event dedicated to promoting a culture. For me, as a representative of the Ministry of Health of Turkmenistan, this is of particular importance, since by gathering here, we demonstrate our commitment to make the world healthier and more sustainable for future generations. We are all well aware that the challenges of climate change and sustainable development are facing us more ac acutely than ever. Our ecosystems and health are under threat, and it's our duty to take responsibility and act. Turkmenistan is aware of the importance of this task, and we are actively working to introduce and expand measures that promote sustainable development and environmental protection. We support initiatives aimed at developing renewable energy sources, improving air and water quality. Since the first day of the independence, Turkmenistan has been an important and active partner in promoting and implementing international initiatives on climate change and disaster risk reduction. In 1995, Turkmenistan ratified the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and joined the Kyoto Protocol of 1998. Based uh, on the policy developed under the direct leadership of our esteemed Arkadak Urban Guli Berdimuhamedov and successfully continued by the respected President Serdar Berdimuhamedov, the fight against climate change and the prevention of diseases associated with it has reached a significantly new level. In September of 2016, within the framework of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly, Turkmenistan signed the Paris Climate Agreement, and in October of the same year, the Majlis of Turkmenistan ratified it. The uh, Ministry of uh, Health would like to highlight the esteemed Greater for the Republic of Uzbekistan and the representative of the UNICEF for the fruitful cooperation on the issues of implementation of requirements of regional strategy on promoting the culture for sustainable development and uh, attracting the youth and children for the uh, agenda of 2025 and strengthening the potential of the measures and the readiness uh, of uh, the Turkmenistan for the solutions. The sustainable development also includes uh, the insurance of uh, the health of our population. We are trying to develop and strengthen the uh, population. And we understand that the climate change may increase uh, the year amount of the, the transmission of diseases. And we are working on uh, the adaptation of our systems at that sphere. As all you may know, the uh, climate change issues and the measures in the Republic of Uzbekistan is uh, for those activities we have the Zamin Foundation as a key role player. The climate monitoring in the quality of the air is also being conducted. As was mentioned before, the uh, signing the regional strategy for supporting the culture and uh, the children attractiveness for the uh, agenda will ensure that we countries of the Central Asia will increase our efficiency for the cooperation. We will be conducting the mutual plans of actions and the events. At the end, I would like to highlight that on behalf of uh, the Ministry of Health and Medical Industry of Turkmenistan. Let me thank my colleagues in Uzbekistan once again for organizing such an important event and for the warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for the speech. Dear participants of today's forum, as you may know, today we're talking about the regional strategy and we have the recommendations of the youth and the children that lays at the foundation for development of the strategy. Those recommendations were developed and presented for the first time during the Central Asian ECHO uh, event, which was held in the Samarkand in October. 
we children one more time would like to highlight the results of our work and our recommendations our proposals and initiatives with this regard i would like to give the floor to my friends the eco volunteers from the central asian countries good day dear guests the participants of the forum i would like to uh, thank for organizing this event and the uh, opportunity to participate in it. It was mentioned before during the uh, ECHO event, we together with the ECHO activists from the region wrote the list of recommendations and proposals on the issues of the climate change and ecology. We would like to highlight our recommendations to the representatives of the Central Asia. Thank you. We believe that Central Asia has a great amount of the very focused young people with wide range of the innovative ideas on how to solve the ecological problems, implementation of which uh, uh, also uh, requests the support on behalf of the government. We want the, that the uh, uh, we want that the government of uh, various countries of Central Asia provide necessary support in implementation of the national and regional projects on solving uh, ecological issues. Maybe. We see that, uh, that our parents don't know that the change of uh, climate will affect our health and our development. And we want them also to be informed on the climate change in Central Asia so that they also engage us in these processes. And uh, in Central Asia, not all work in an ecological manner. Uh, there is a lot of CO2 emission and other uh, uh, aspects. We want them all to be green in Central Asia so that we can maintain and conserve natural resources. We want to expand the possibilities of the young people and children, their most vulnerable group, so that they're actively engaged uh, and take part in the decision-making related to environment and ecology. We propose several ways. Our initiative is focused, first of all, on ensuring wide access to young people, including people with disabilities, to the dialogue with the governmental institutions and the main people that are making decisions. We also, I want uh, under the Minister of Ecology and Environment uh, and in changing uh, and climate change necessary opportunities for young people and also creation of the regional platform where the young people can take part in uh, uh, voting uh, and in adopting various um, laws on environmental issues and also to create the platform at regional level and that platform will uh, allow us uh, to And that will also uh, influence uh, the ecological decisions made. We want that the governments of our countries uh, also engage and uh, also um, uh, facilitate creation of startups, allocating grants, and also provide the necessary uh, process and receive grants. And also higher educational institutions and in hiring, and also having an opportunity for us uh, to do the um, uh, practice at the level of the uh, various institutions. And also among various students, we want that uh, young people play important role, including vulnerable groups who could play a, a role of partner in uh, disseminating information on agriculture and the various ecological events. We want to improve the capacity of teachers in ecological area and also ensure that uh, the exchange uh, programs um, with various uh, ecological institutions could take place. Eco scouting in educational institutions of our countries. Besides, we want the ecological skills could be developed from very early stage in the following manner, engaging young people with the knowledge and experience in ecological area to train kids and also uh, in the kindergarten to create necessary spots uh, for ecology and make cartoons with ecological topics. We want you to engage leaders of communities, local um, um, governmental and managerial bodies, 
spiritual mentors, civil activists, and influential celebrities to promote environmental culture among the population. And also we ask to support youth environmental startups in every possible way to introduce AI in solving ecological problems. We want to understand and gain knowledge. We want information to be accessible. This strategy is important for regional cooperation among young people on the way to the green future. And we, the young people of Central Asia, want to be a very active partner in solving ecological issues. Our solutions, our future. We are active activists. We want that our recommendations will be useful not only for Central Asian countries, but also for other countries of the world which face with similar ecological and climatic issues. Dear participants of the forum, uh, we are now finalizing uh, the official part of the forum, and we invite uh, the parties of Central Asia to sign Central Asian strategy on promoting the culture of the sustainable development and engaging kids and young people into climatic agenda for 2024-2030. Thank you. We would like to congratulate all countries of Central Asia with signing of this very important and historical document at the same time. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We would like to thank all of you for your active participation on the forum. Now we would like to finalize and call it a day. I would like to invite all the guests and participants of the event to lunch.